Welcome to Life Mastery for Women. I'm your host, Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. I've been studying mind mastery and emotional management and energy work and its connection to spirituality for over 25 years. And in this podcast, I help guide you out of your daily struggles in life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality. Life is hard, but your daily growth doesn't have to be. Join me three times a week as I lead you inward on a healing, connecting, and creating journey. Let's go get that nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you intuitively connected. If you're not intuitively connected, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. One of my favorite transformational stories is connecting to my intuition. Now, it's my favorite story. It was not my favorite experience. Let's just decipher between the two. Now, why was it a favorite story? I'll tell you in the end. Why was it not my favorite experience? Let me share. We had taken the boys to, this was all three boys actually, to Great Wolf Lodge. And you know, uh, and if you're not familiar with Great Wolf Lodge, it's just an indoor water park. It's a giant hotel and they have an indoor water park. And we had spent, um, were we spending the weekend there? I don't think we were. I think this was literally just in a, we were just going for the day. And we just got there. And I would say we probably hardly been there for 20 minutes, hardly. And you know how um, they have this big climbing apparatus that has all these like rope bridges and you it's like a giant playground and it has all these different levels and stairs and steps and things to hang from and these rope bridges and all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like this little climbing thing. And there's tons of kids all over the place. And anyway, so I'm chasing Bob and Cameron and we're running around through there and we're climbing up through the top. So you have to like duck underneath this thing and crawl across that thing and run across this bridge and up this ladder and over this, you know, thing. And we get to the top of these slides. Well, before I get to the slides, I basically have to duck underneath this bridge. And I don't have to get down to my hands and knees, but I had to bend at the waist. And I did. And I heard loud and clear as if somebody was standing next to me and saying this to me and said, don't do that again. And that was it. I went down the slide and I heard it and it didn't like stop me in my tracks, but it was clear as day. Well, I don't know if you know me that well, but nobody tells me what to do, (laughs) even my intuition. And let's just see how that unfolded for me. So I climbed back to the top and I remember hearing it and I, I flip around and through this little maze and all this thing and I'm chasing the boys and we're running through this and climbing across the thing and up the ladder and down this little thing and across these little monkey bars and across the rope bridge. And I come to that same place where just moments before I heard a very distinct voice say, don't do that again. And what do I do? I did it again. And guess what? My back seized up. I get to the top, I'm like four feet away from the top of the top of the slide. And I'm holding my back and I'm like, Oh, man, like, what the frick? Like, what just happened? Well, you did it again. (laughs) Well, so I won't go into all the details of the story. But that was basically the start of a series of years of back pain. Now, that put me on my back for two weeks. Now, like I said, the experience was not the best. But the connection to my intuition began that day. Now, did it begin and I became an expert and I was so amazed about how, and now this was back in like friggin' 2013 or something. And uh, did I become an expert and I was like, oh my God, I just have these guides around me and I can see angels and I have this, you know, this intuition voice that talks about, hell no. Now, I wish it was that easy because my life I think would have been easier to have this perspective. But what I want to talk about today is connecting to that voice. We all have it. Some days it's stronger than others. This particular day, it was so strong. But the problem was not the intuition. The problem was that I didn't listen. Now, that does become an issue if you do connect and you decide, eh, I'm going to connect to it. Thanks, Jen. But I'm just not going to actually listen and follow it. That's when things become really difficult. If you are a parent, you know this. It's just like you're the intuition to your kids. When you say, hey, you know what? Oh, I I wouldn't wear shorts today. It's going to be cold later. And the kid goes, eh, I'm going to wear shorts anyway. And they come home and their legs are purple. 
Mom, oh my God, it was so cold today. I can't believe I didn't wear jeans. I can't believe you didn't tell me. Uh -uh, Don't tell me that, right? So our intuition is similar to us having parental guidance, but in a good way, not the helicopter parent, not the obnoxious parent that tells us not to eat candy and sugar, but the parent that watches out for us, the parent who has this perspective that would be great for us to know ahead of time. So we would have a safer experience. What this really does is allows us to get a glimpse into the future. What would be the best decision? What job would be the best for me? What's the best food for me to eat about this journey? What's the best experience that I should go and get in my business to make me the best business owner possible? What's the best school to go through? Who's the best person today? All of these these questions can be answered by tapping into a higher perspective. This higher perspective can be a couple of different things. One, it could be your higher self. So you came here with this purpose, your spiritual being is tucked away inside your meat suit and is going through this experience and is kind of silently the backseat driver. You ultimately have what the Bible will call free will. You can do anything you want. You could do nothing with your gift. You could play video games all day. You could become a lawyer and then later become a massage therapist. You can do anything you want with whatever gifts you have. But the silent backseat driver will tell you, drive slower, turn left, go faster, take this hill, turn left when you get to the top of the hill. No, don't go to that school, go to this school. No, don't date him, date him instead. Okay. So now it's in the silent partner. That's the trick. Because it's a silent partner. It's not like your mother in law in the backseat. It is a quiet, best friend in the backseat. Understand that your intuition is not only your best friend, but it's a higher version of you. It's the part of you that came here to explore the world and to experience and expand. And if you don't go, then you don't expand. But now there's a lot of coaches out there that will say, you only get one chance. And that's not true. Life is not just about driving down the highway and you missed your exit. Now you have to drive miles out of the way to come back to your exit. It is about that opportunity will come back again, but it will look different. You ever been, you ever had a friend who dates the wrong guy and then she breaks up with him or he breaks up with her or whatever, and then she dates another wrong guy? She's just getting back on the exit, right? She, it looks a little bit different. Maybe this guy wears glasses or he's blonde or he works at this other job, but it's still the same scenario, okay? You will have many experiences as long as you continue to be on the lookout for them. If you stand your ground and say, okay, I want to start living my higher purpose. I'm done and tired with all the lessons. I want to start learning these lessons so I can advance in my life. Once we start learning the lessons, then we get to move on. It's the same as when you graduate first grade, you get to learn new things in second grade and so on. If we don't and we continue, we just get older. Now we're the oldest first grader in the class, in the school, in history. (laughs) So, once you, once you are in your life, you're kind of experiencing some things with your finances, with your relationships, with your body, it's time to start looking at your life and gaining those lessons. Now, there's lots of lessons you can get from this experience, right? So I say, oh, okay, well, I dated this person and this person was um, a complete moron and the relationship was terrible. Once the relationship is over, I go, okay, what lessons did I learn from that? What are the things that I won't tolerate next time versus I just speed into the next relationship, which I see often. But if we take the lessons with us, then we mold ourselves into meeting our a higher perspective, becoming a little bit more elevated in our life. If I get a paycheck and I spend the entire paycheck and then a week later my rent is due, but I don't have any money, that's a pretty hard lesson to learn. Now I need to manage my money. There's so many people that, I, that I've that i run into that say, I just don't make enough money. And I say, you know, the, the, um, the problem isn't about you making money. The problem is about you managing your money. So when there's a problem, that means that there's a skill for you to learn. So for example, the stupid relationship that I was in for four years, what I needed to learn 
from that relationship is I need to set boundaries and I need to respect myself. Because when that relationship was over, I was nothing but an empty shell, like literally an empty shell. It was an awful, 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 awful times a billion of how I felt when that relationship was over. So that told me I gave too much of myself in that relationship. Now, did I do the same thing in the next one? Pretty darn close. The relationship only lasted two years and it was not as bad as the four-year relationship, but I didn't give up myself as much. And I also remember that I didn't go back and make the same mistakes that I went with the other one, like through the breakups. Girls, I bet you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is, oh, they apologize. And then you find yourself going over there one evening in hopes that the things would all be different. Lo and behold, weird, they're not. She just gave a bunch of lip service and I freaking fell for it. Never again, right? We start to learn from these experiences. We start to grow as an individual. You start to learn to set boundaries. You start to learn to love yourself. All of these things are helping you to gain connection, a connection to the higher version of yourself. And I don't know about you, but that is where I'm going. I am a personal development, like, what do you call it? Like, I am addicted, solely, wholeheartedly addicted to personal development. I am constantly learning something every single day about myself. And I take that knowledge and I apply it right now in my life. Right now, I apply it in my life. My here's here's a little commercial break. I have a uh, group coaching program that just ended um, just a few uh, well a week ago, and then I'm wanting to start another version with these same girls. Like I really want to move on to a longer um, a longer lasting relationship, a longer lasting program with them, so I can really dive deep into their healing and transformation. And I was speaking with my coach today and I'm like, okay, you know, there's some blocks coming up and I'm wondering, you know, about working, you know, cause I have a coach. And so I'm working with my coach. And the first thing she says is you should uncover or um, release your blocks and uncover what your limiting beliefs are about this next phase of your business. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, so I get out my giant binder and I start making notes. This is all about growth. The whole business that I'm in is all about growth for others, but it's also growth for me. So the work that I give to the the ladies that are in my group is the same stuff that I do because I might be a, you know, a few levels ahead of where they are, but I'm still going too. And as I offer a new program, I need to grow and I need to change so that I can turn around and assist them. So it's been a, it's been a really fun adventure and, and figuring out my business. And it's been, it's been like, there's been lots of Uh, tantrums (laughs) on my part and lots of tears and lots of angry moments. But you know, when I look back at it, I wouldn't change it for the world. So let's get back to intuition. I use my intuition for pretty much everything. Like I, I know that when I connect, I get so much clarity and so much peace and confidence in my decisions that it just, it's just this natural thing. It's just this definite yes. You know what I mean? It's just a definite answer. So I first want to talk about, let's first discuss what your intuition is. Now I gave you a little bit, but it's a, it's a version of your higher self and it's the quiet person. It's a quiet um, voice, right? The little tiny voice in the back of your head. And it's also the, the, the silent backseat driver, right? So when you understand one thing, you will start to want to create a a deeper relationship and a connection with your intuition. And that one thing is your intuition is your best friend. Your intuition has your back. Your intuition wants the very best for you. Sometimes it's warnings. Sometimes it's lessons. Lessons can be a little bit difficult, but don't get mad. And sometimes it's just mere guidance, okay? When they are lessons, you will understand (laughs) that something is difficult. It is a chance for expansion. You have to walk through the muck to get to the sunny side of the street, okay? You have to get through the crappy relationships to uncover who it is you really are and for you to become the best version of yourself so you can attract the lovely 
person on the other side. Okay. So, but when they're warnings, this would be sort of like when they said, I wouldn't do that again. And I did. That was a warning. Okay. Don't cross the street. Don't date that guy. Don't walk down the dark alley. Don't eat that food. Uh, don't walk under that ladder, right? They're, those are all warnings. The other is guidance. So like when I'm creating my program and I go, I want the best version of the program that I can create for the betterment of the, the planet. Like I want to elevate and help women transform to become the best version of themselves for the sake of the planet. Because if they're feeling better, then they will, then it will ripple out right? So if that's the case, then my intuition goes, okay, this is the kind of program you should you should make. But there are also lessons within there. Because like I said, if I'm going to create a deeper transformational program for these gals, then I need to be at more advanced, right? I need to advance my own personal and spiritual growth, okay? So when you understand that your intuition is your best friend, then it makes sense for you to deepen that connection. Let's talk about um, well, let me let me give you another another quick about what the other voices could be. So when I am creating a program, when I'm working through limiting beliefs, when I'm looking for answers and solutions, I will connect to my intuition. I do that through my coaching program. I do it when I'm connecting with one on ones, when I do energy release um, work through or energy healing through the booth that we go and do our expos. I connect to that person so I can tap into their energy. That is intuitively how I'm doing that. Now, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, but let's talk about why you might not be able to connect. So one of the very first, when I first started understanding what was happening, because I wasn't even aware that I could connect in that way. I knew that there was like this silent voice and I knew that there was this higher self or the spiritual being or whatever. But I think I didn't quite understand that... Um, I could tap in in such a way that I could basically improve my, or I improve the Claire. So Claire audience, clairvoyant, Claire cognizant, and Claire um, sentient. And when I understood that I could do that, and I could improve those skills, well, then it just made sense for me to improve those skills. And I keep forgetting, I'm not, I keep not going back to the other types of voices. So there's your intuition, which is your higher self. So that's basically you getting advice from you. That's a different higher version of you. Then there's guides, spirit guides, bringing in other people that have that have transcended that can come back and give some other advice. Now, when I connect, when I say I connect to my guides, I have this process and Amy and I do it. Uh, it's very powerful when we, when we work it together um, because she like she can stay in the mental energy so she can ask the questions and then intuitively, I'm basically interpreting what the guides are saying. We are getting completely different people coming in um, or angels. I'm not sure what they are, but spiritual beings that have crossed over. Maybe they have never taken physical form. That part, I'm not sure. But I can I can tap into my intuitive abilities and get an answer right now. Um, and that's a higher version of me. But when I tap into guides, that is, those are different guides than what my intuition is. Um, and it's kind of fun because I get to get different ideas and perspective that I wouldn't get from my intuition. Um, that's all I really want to say about those because that's not really what we're talking about in this episode. But but connecting to intuition. Now, here are some of the mistakes or the reasons why either you're not connecting or it's not working for you. The number one, the number one is impatience. I tried. I didn't get it. It's like I made the phone call. They didn't answer. I'm not calling back. Impatience is definitely a test. It's definitely a lesson. We find impatience is a very fast energy that is abandoned quickly. And you wait 10 more minutes, you could have gotten an answer. Now, I'm not saying to get into that meditative state and be there for seven days. What I'm saying is continue to try because you're going to be overcoming so many things about yourself that you have to get to another place of you in order to even be able to reach your intuition, if that makes sense. Your intuition is is always in the background guiding you, but you can always override it. The more that you can open that connection between the physical version of you and the spiritual version of you, your intuition, 
the more you can open that connection, the stronger the connection is going to be. If it's just a teeny little silk string, then it's going to be harder for you to listen and get that guidance. So understanding that it's going to take a little bit of practice to getting in, and I'm going to talk about the how right after this, but getting into that space where intuition can talk to you. Another is inconsistency, where I did it once, but then I wasn't able to do it again. So being consistent, even if you're just connecting to say, you know what, I'm just connected, like I work at home, right? And you should see my, you should see the the living room right now, which is kind of our makeshift office. My office downstairs is very cold. It's, it's uh, February right now, and it's terribly cold downstairs. But so I have my recording studio is downstairs, my office is downstairs. But right now I'm just kind of using a table and I've got all my papers and binders and journals and folders and notes all over the couch and all over the table and all over the desk. And because I'm in the middle of creating this new program. And I get really overwhelmed by all the information. And my lovely organizing wife is at work right now. And it's so funny that she can help me organize this thoughts when I help her organize her desk. It's it's a win-win. <laughs> we are a great team. Um, anyway, so um, when we are when we are connecting like this, like I connect in the morning and I just say, um, I light incense and I say, um, I clean and clear any and all negative energy from the space and I allow uh, love and light to enter here. And then if I could just connect intuitively for the day to give me guidance, support and messages that I need when I am creating, you know, this program or whatever it is I'm doing. And that just allows the, for me, it allows the connection to be strong and it allows intuition to come in at higher speeds and with a little bit louder of a voice. So I'm like tapped in. Okay. So when you are inconsistent, you are not allowing the 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 strength of the connection to be at a at its utmost power, I guess. So trying every day, doing it every morning, every evening before you go to bed. Um, try it during your lunchtime. There's all these different ways, and I'll I'll talk about how you can connect in different ways, but 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 being consistent with it and tapping in today and just allowing those messages to come through. Another is not having a process, like not really doing anything regularly. It's like it's like um you want to work a certain muscle, but you were let's say you want to you want to improve your arms and so you're doing bicep curls and then the next day you do leg presses. Okay, well you you didn't do your bicep curls today, so your bicep curls now are not getting stronger. And so when you don't, when you're not having that consistent practice, then it tends to not build the strength over time Um, and not having a process. So the inconsistency, but also having a way to do it. So I stand barefoot or at least in socks. I have my feet on the floor. I'm standing up so I can really feel the weight of my body on the floor, on my feet. I'm connecting to Mother Earth. And then I say what I just said, I'm clean and clear any negative energy, allow only love and light to enter here. And if I could be connected intuitively for the day while I'm doing whatever I'm doing, that is my process. Now, also what I'm doing is I am standing on my feet and I have my feet flat on the floor. And I'm like I said, I'm barefoot or I'm in socks. And what I'm doing is I am like spreading my feet apart on the floor as if I'm like trying to separate floorboards. So I can really feel the groundedness of my standing. It really helps me to get centered and grounded. And I'm telling you, I could have a day where days in a row where I'm like a four or five and I'm like, when I do that exercise, when, and it's not an exercise, it's just a process. When I do that, not only do I get grounded and not only do I connect intuitively, but I'm a freaking 10 all day long. And everybody wants to be around me when I'm a 10. Okay, the next one is thinking that your mental thoughts are your intuition. That is not true. Here's how you know the difference between an intuitive thought coming from a different version of you versus it's just a mental answer. One of the ways to tell is, did the thought come from you or did it not? (laughs) And I know that seems so ridiculous, but it's like, it's like if I do this, if I ask you a question, or let's say I do this, I ask a question out loud. Am I answering the question or is it as if somebody else is in the room answering the question for me? Okay, there's a difference. Once you start going inward, 
and you start playing around with your thoughts and your emotions and your awareness of how your body is and and the function of your body, and you start really starting to dive into the energy of the inside of your body, then you will immediately know what I'm talking about. If that doesn't make any sense to you, that's okay. You're going to know later as it comes up. So like when I was, you know, at the Great Wolf Lodge and I was ducking under that little bridge and it was like somebody else said it. I did, the thought came through me, but it didn't come from me. That's a good one. Write that down. That's a good way to remember it. It came through me, not from me. I know there's a lot of people out there. I've coached a ton of women and and I'll ask them a question and they're like, yeah. And I'm like, or they'll go, yeah. And I'm like, okay, you sound like you're asking me. No, my intuition says yes. I'm like, your intuition is a lot more confident than you are. <laughs> so that's not it. Anyway, but um, that's a good way to to remember it is that the thought came from outside of you. Also, if it gave you confidence. Now, when I heard that and I said, I wouldn't do that again if I were you, right? When I heard that, it was a confident, like I didn't freak out and look around and be like, oh my God, who just said that to me? Now, the issue was that I went against it. Now, there's a lesson there. If I wouldn't have gone against it, would I have learned the lesson? Now, that's the matrix question of the episode. Give that one a try. Because I heard, I heard what they said. I just didn't follow it. So, because I didn't follow it, or because when I did follow it, it gave me a lesson, like pay attention to your intuition was kind of the lesson. And also my body needs some work, right? But if I didn't, if I heard the, if I heard them say, I wouldn't do that again, and then I didn't do it, would I have gotten the lesson? Hmm, I'll ponder that. Okay, let's talk about how we connect. Intuition, like I said, is your silent partner. It's your silent backseat driver, Okay, they don't take the wheel of the car, you do. Now, if you're driving, this is you and your body and your mind all driving, and your intuition says when you get to the light, turn left, you have a choice. When you get to the light, do you turn left or not? If you decide to continue going straight, you're just going against what your intuition says, but you're still in control. You have free will, like the Bible says. Okay, it's a matter of if you decide to turn left. Great things can happen, great epiphanies, perspective shifts, transformational um, uh, experiences. I mean, the things that I, when I have turned left, when my, when my intuition said turn left, have been amazing experiences for me. I also get tons of ideas. So you could get tons of ideas. You get solutions to your problems. You get guidance. You get answers. You get pointed in the right direction. You get fed the right words to say to your boss to get the raise or to say in a job interview to get the job, right? So it is the benefits are amazing and I would always recommend it. Here's how, here are some ways to do this. First, you have to be patient with yourself and with your intuition that's going to come through when it's time to come through. So we have to give it some time. We have to give it some consistency. We have to create a process. Now, my process works for me, and it's been different processes over the years, but my process works for me. It may or may not work for you. So you will have to kind of explore it a little bit and come up with something that feels amazing to you, okay? But you should come up with a process. Um, The other is to know the difference between your thoughts and your intuition. And just as you continue to strengthen the connection, you will definitely notice the difference. I feel so different in my energy when I've connected to my intuition. I'm confident. I feel strong. Like my body feels strong. And I just feel like there's no static in my energy. And if you suffer from any kind of anxiety or overwhelm or chaos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just clear. I just go from here to there. It's like it's like I'm in a big city and I know how to get from my house to the pool, right? I just turn here and go here and I drive this fast and I turn this corner and I stop at this gas station and get a coffee and then I go right and I go straight through that light and there it is on the left, right? It's just this confidence. That's how I feel throughout my day when I connect to intuition. All right, here's some other ways to connect. Getting in between the gaps of your thinking. When you are sitting quietly, set a timer, 10 minutes, close your eyes, sit comfortably, get quiet, and just pay attention to what your thoughts are doing. 
don't guide them, don't control them, don't do anything, but just watch what they do. And and when they start to spiral past a few seconds and you start to now where you're, you're engaging your emotions or your body and now your body wants to get up, um, then just bring them back to your breathing and bring them back to be like, nope, we're going to try to find the gap between our thoughts. For example... I'm sitting quietly and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I forgot. I need to, I need to write, I need to send this email. And then you just let that thought go. If you attach to the thought, what happens is I can't hardly sit there any longer and I get up and I write the email. And next thing I know, I'm over here distracted. I'm like, oh crap, that's right. I was going to try meditating, right? So just pay attention to what your thoughts are doing. And you could do several several few minute ones like I'm going to sit for three minutes okay and then and I'm going to get up and do some things because maybe I remember something and I don't want to forget it and I'm going to go and take care of that thing um, uh, and then set another three minutes get up and go do that thing and then come back and do another three minutes you can break it into pieces like that you can do 10 minute increments what you could do also if you're starting especially if you're like fast paced like I am have a tiny notebook with a pencil next to you while you're trying this. Then if you have a, a, something that you need to write down, like, oh, I forgot I got to call my son's teacher or, oh, I got to send that email. Then you just open your eyes just a little bit and you just make a note in that little notebook and you get back to your meditation. Okay. Because I'm always afraid that I'm going to forget. You know, I already forgot. So now I'm meditating and then I remember and I don't want to forget again. Um, okay. You're going to keep doing that. You're going to keep doing. And if I were to say, if you want to connect to your intuition by the end of the week, then I would say do that practice three to five times a day. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, okay? And practice it several times. And then watch how it gets stronger. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Notice if you notice difference of how you're feeling, how you're thinking, how your day is structured, how your emotional state is. Just notice what you notice and make note of it write it down in a journal said hey you know i've been connecting to intuitively this is this is my first 10 minutes i noticed that my brain is like on speed okay the second 10 minutes i noticed that my brain was on speed but i was able to recognize it and bring it back to center third time i noticed that my brain wasn't on speed as much fourth time i noticed that there i could see and feel the gaps in between my thoughts that's how fast that's how fast you can connect okay so then the next is to place your confidence that you will be able to do this. Find that place in confidence that if you're still listening to me right now, that you have hope or you have some faith or confidence or trust that there is something bigger out there that can connect with you. That this physical planet is not all there is. In my, in my experience, it isn't. I come across possibilities and synchronicities, and the more I meditate and the more I connect to my intuition, the more those synchronicities and possibilities and opportunities show up. And that's when life gets really fun. That's when I feel amazing and I have amazing relationships. Because if you're in, if you're in your life right now, if you're in a, those low survival states, where you're just anxious, depressed, angry, lonely, grieving, sad, upset, frustrated, those low vibrational states, those low vibrational energy states, most likely your relationships suck. Your relationship with your spouse, your kids, your coworkers, your boss, they all suck because you are in a very self, self-absorbed self space because you feel like crap. So how can we start to get out of this crappy feeling? Start connecting to your intuition. Start gaining this guidance of the strength and this higher perspective and higher version of you and allowing your best friend, which is like this energy best friend, to be your guide. And here's what will happen. Your body will start feeling better. When you're in a good mood, aren't your relationships better? When you feel good physically in your body, aren't your relationships better? And when you feel good physically, aren't your relationships better, right? I mean, everything just feels better. So when I'm in a bad mood, I usually want to eat the children, okay? When I'm in a good mood, I want to go play in the backyard with them. I want to, we just celebrated Valentine's Day yesterday and it was so fun. I made some cookies and we bought some gluten-free cookies because Brandon doesn't, you know, he's gluten and casein-free. And uh, 
we had uh, we bought some cookies for him and I made some cookies for everyone else and we scooped up some frosting and we made some frosting and we frosted these cookies and it was so amazing. And that's not always the case. Sometimes we're in the kitchen with the kids and I'm like, oh my God, how do they not know how to do this yet? You know, and I get kind of upset and kind of grumpy and kind of, and I'm like, okay, and it gets really chaotic. Guess what I did yesterday? I had three meditations. I connected intuitively before everyone got home and it was an amazing evening. So I hope this episode served you. I hope that this was something that you will continue to bring into your life. There are amazing results that I have gotten. I can't even express to you how beautiful my experience has been. Has it been easy? Well, no, not in the very beginning, but I will tell you this. It is amazing now. It took me some time. It took me some practice and some, some consistency to create a process that worked for doing it. I suggest you do the same thing. And if it's something that you need some help with, please reach out. I have a group coaching program always coming up. We have live events all the time. We're, we're like connecting with people all over the place. So send me an email, come out to our group, friend me on Facebook, Jen Mac, J-E-N-M-A-C. Send me a message that, hey, I want to I wanna improve my intuition. And I will be more than happy to connect with you. If you enjoyed this show, please consider making a small donation. This helps me to continue creating powerful episodes for you each week, but also you become a bigger part of changing the world by changing yourself one episode at a time. By investing in my show, you are investing in yourself, your life, and your planet. And by elevating yourself, you are elevating others around you. And I thank you.